So you're thinking about either moving to, visiting some of the best beaches in Northwest Florida. Well, in this video, my team and I compiled the best beaches, all for different reasons, here in this video, and you're gonna see the top 10, so stick around. What's up everybody? This is Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group. We're right here in the Destin Fort Walton Beach area. That's right here in the Emerald Coast. If this is your first time to our channel, we do tons and tons of videos about everything you need to know about our area. Now, as a military veteran of 14 years and now a military spouse, I've moved so many places. And every time I move somewhere, there was always such a lack of information of where to move to and what to anticipate. Thus, why we have created this channel for you. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click that little bell so you're notified every single time we got a new video coming out. Now, honestly, we get tons of questions. We got people reaching out wondering what it's like to eat, sleep, work, play here in our area. And you know, we absolutely love it. So if you are moving to this area, you got some questions, need some help again, give us a call, text, find us on social media, shoot us an email, whatever you gotta do, we got your back moving here to the Destin Fort Walton Beach area. All right, so let's get on to it. What are those top 10 beaches? What is Northwest Florida out of all of Florida really known for? And that's right, that's gonna be the beaches. If you've been to the Eastern part of Florida and you've seen those beaches, and then you went over to the Western pot side on the Gulf Coast, yeah, there's quite a bit of a difference. And well, we got the better one. <laughs> Unbiased opinion? Yeah, probably not. All right, so let's get into the different categories now these aren't necessarily in a specific order it is more for you to see hey this one's best for whatever reason so let's get going so number one on our list is panama city beach the reason it's number one is because it's probably got the best place for spring breakers it's always been that way down there family vacationers and this is mainly due because it's relatively, <laughs> relatively cheap to come down here and find a condo, to find an Airbnb, VRBO, or whatever it is, and, and come down and enjoy it. But the reason being is that there's tons of activities out there. You've got parks, you've got restaurants, you've got golfing, pretty much all of Florida, right? Shopping, you get to bar hop around this area. Definitely check out Pier Park if you're gonna come out to Panama City Beach. You've, of course, got lots of dining options, hiking, biking, and of course, sunbathing. And that's this beautiful part of the Sunshine State. <laughs> All right, number two, moving on, is St. George Island. Now, this is just south of Tallahassee. It's actually got, a, and is best known for being a 22-mile serene, secluded barrier island. Uh, the, the reason this is even on the list is if you've ever been to this area, it's probably got some of the best unobstructed coastline views in all of Northwest Florida. Now, if you go in through the town, it's got some charming cottages, spacious beach homes, all that you can rent out and are mainly used for a lot of vacationers. Now, if you go up to the eastern tip there, you've got St. George State Park. Now, that's just beautiful area out there. You've got lots of forest and the white sand dunes. And of course you have the sandy beaches all around that park. So it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous in there. It's really ideal for hiking, nature trails, what have you. Number three on our list is Destin. That is right, that's here in Destin. One of my favorite places to go to. What is known first and foremost for is world-class fishing and boating. And it was actually named one of the luckiest fishing villages and it definitely has shown. It's got great, uh, as I said, fishing, boating, and lots of attractions out here. Now, if you haven't been to Destin, definitely want to look up what's called Crab Island. It's not a real island. It's kind of a sandbar sort of thing. But during the warm months, people will come out from Destin and the surrounding areas just go ahead and put their boats there on the island. They'll link up to one another and it's just a big, big festival party. It seems like every day out there, just, just an absolute great time. But when you're in Destin, you have shopping, you have lots of dining, 
you can go out to a lot of these different places and watch the sunset <laughs> while you're out there having some delicious libations or enjoying your dinner. Of course, you have the Harbor Walk with Margaritaville down there. They've got zip lines, live music all the time. Uh, if you're looking to shop, shop till you drop. <laughs> You've got the Silver Sands Premium Outlets. Of course, you have the Destin Commons. And if you're looking for something just a little bit more resort-like that pretty much anybody can get out to, definitely check out Baytown Wharf, which is out towards Sand Destin, where you can go out for a sunset cruise or dinner cruise. They've got lots of just amenities inside there. It's definitely something to check out. All right, number four is Grayton Beach. Now, Grayton Beach is actually located in this pretty, it is a 2,000 acre unspoiled land that is Grayton Beach State Park. Now, the reason people like going to this is kind of a funky, hip, eccentric little beach town as you go into all these different shops. It, it's got a certain feel to it when you get in there and it's pretty cool. Uh, it's kind of one of those hidden gems uh, that, that you can go out and find out in the what we call the 30A area and that's just known because of the highway that goes through that and in this area you definitely want to check out this brackish uh, western lake right uh, brackish just means it's a mix between salt water and fresh water and this is great for swimming kayaking canoeing or a little bit of stand-up paddle boarding whatever you want to do <laughs> Okay, let's head on over towards Pensacola to Perdido Key, which is about, yeah, about 20 miles or so from the actual Pensacola area. Now, this Perdido Key is best known for it being just laid back and really for those that are looking for kind of some tranquility and solitude, it's just really really chill uh, when people go through there when i have personally shown people condos out there they've all commented that it's very clean and a well-kept area and there's lots of wildlife i haven't really seen any but <laughs> there's lots of wildlife that's out there uh, where you have seabirds sea turtles and all sorts of great stuff so great area for relaxing just know that the perdido in spanish also means lost so it's kind of the lost key so there's not a whole lot of stuff to do out there, but if you're looking for a place to go ahead and relax and just kind of enjoy that community, this is a great place for you. All right, moving on to relaxing. Let's go to number six, which is Navarre Beach. Navarre Beach was voted the most relaxing beach of, in all of Florida. It really doesn't need so much to it because it's just beautiful in a very naturalistic way. It also has the longest fishing pier that's out there. You've, obviously you can fish, bike, hike of course you've got the nature trails that are out there but it's it's a little built up but it's not it's not condo city as a lot of people have commented uh to me when they're trying to move around there's a few that are out there there's a lot of single family homes they are building it up a little bit but it's really nice because you can't really go too far east because that's kind of the air force base that you can't get out of so you have all this open beach all around you and it's just it's just great all right, number seven is Seaside. Now, Seaside, if you haven't heard of that, again, down in the 30 area, 30A area that we were talking about before, it uh, is best known for its iconic architecture. What I mean by that is that it's got peak roof, pastels, white picket fences, everything seems to be painted white out there, and it's it's got its own unique feel, feel to it. Of course, you got great shops and eateries. If you go to the main part of Seaside, there's this big oval with an outdoor amphitheater. There's food trucks out there. And of course you have this, uh, we'll say a boardwalk that goes for miles down uh, either side from Seaside as well. Uh, my wife and I just went down for a staycation <laughs> this past summer. And that's what we did is just got rented some bikes and went down there and just enjoyed some of the eateries, the views, everything. It was absolutely gorgeous out there and just a great place to go visit or live. All right, number eight is Fort Walton Beach. And this is where our team's at actually. <laughs> uh, Fort Walton Beach is best known for its really untouched accessible beaches. If you go down and look at a map on Google, you'll see we have something down towards the bottom, which is called Okaloosa Island. 
Okaloosa Island, because of its proximity to Eglin Air Force Base, is another reason Fort Walton Beach is known. Uh, that brings in like 15,000 people each year. Um, anyway, uh, you'll see that there are six miles worth of untouched and unbuildable uh, areas that are out there that are open to the public for the most part. And you'll be able to get out there on these untouched, just immaculate beaches where you'll just see people going down Highway 98 and pulling off to the side. And there's a couple of walkways to get out there. If you want to have a beautiful beach all to yourself, well, Fort Walton Beach is the best place to go for that. Not only that, but you're not going to see condos that tower over six, uh, six stories tall. Uh, mainly, again, because of the Air Force Base there, they restricted the height. So you're not going to see these huge, huge uh, condo buildings out there. You will see an array of them, but it won't be what you probably be used to seeing in South Florida. Now, Fort Walton Beach also has lots of shops. They've got restaurants. There's another one on Okaloosa Island, kind of on the intercoastal waterway or bayside, as we call it, uh, called the Gulf. And that actually, you can sit there on all different types of seating. It's got these uh, uh, old containers that they've built into just the structure that's around there. And it's, the ambiance is amazing as the sun sets out there, just, just amazing. And of course, it's also known for the Aviation Armament Museum, if you do go out and check that out, just south of Eglin Air Force Base. Okay, number nine is Pensacola Beach. Now this is best known for the most lively of the beach areas and of course the nightlife that is attached to it. And what I mean by that is there's a street that's in downtown Pensacola. Now one thing I want to tell you is that Pensacola Beach is actually south of Gulf Breeze. So you have to pass over two bridges to get back into uh, Pensacola. But when you do, uh, you're going to find the street called Palafox Street. It's actually named one of the 10 greatest streets in America. And it's because this area has a very vibrant downtown scene. I personally love it. It's filled with restaurant, bars, boutiques, and just great nightlife. It was actually known best for the drink called the Bushwhacker drink. Although the first time I ever had it wasn't in Pensacola. It was on a cruise out in the Caribbean. So still loved it and it's still really good to get here. <laughs> All right, last but not least is number 10, the Santa Rosa Beach. Now, Santa Rosa Beach is named one of the best beaches on earth, according to Travel and Leisure magazine. Now, this is 26 miles of turquoise waters, coastal. It's got this coastal charm to it. And there's lots and lots of culinary options and art. So this area is going to include a lot of uh, of this area, which we call the entire 30A area. Just go ahead and look at scenic 30A on uh, your Google Maps or whatever that you're using. And you'll trace it down to some of the places that we already mentioned, which was Grayton Beach, Seaside, all the way to Rosemary Beach is where you're gonna find all these, uh, this, this area. This is also one of the most affluent areas uh, in Northwest Florida, where you're going to see little houses going for a million dollars or more. And uh, it has a certain feel, a certain community to it. And it's, it's just really cool to come visit. And if you're if you've got enough money, you can live the life there too. <laughs> well, that's all that we have for you for the best beaches here in Northwest Florida. If you have any questions about anything that I mentioned here, please go ahead and leave them here in the comments below. And if you are considering moving to this area or any of the areas that we mentioned here, uh, feel free to reach out to us, give us a call, text, find us on social media, send us an email, whatever you gotta do, we got your back when moving to our area. Again, I'm Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group here with EXP Realty. We'll see you in our next video. Take care.